Here in India's financial capital, the division between rich and poor is stark, not only when it comes to everyday life, but also in the city's response to violent attacks. And I was totally injured. My Alwyn de Kuna so lives with the scars of one of Mumbai's energy. deadliest bomb blasts. On July 11, 2006, de Kuna was riding the train to work when a series of bombs exploded on board. The force of the blast tore off his right arm, which doctors later reattached. 209 people died, more than 700 were injured. Most or all of the victims were part of Mumbai's working class. Four operations and more than two years later, de Kuna and others are still fighting for government assistance to help pay their medical bills. When it is a common people dies, means poor people dies, nobody's scared. But when the effect is gone on rich people, then definitely everybody's scared, government also. The most recent attacks on Mumbai are perhaps an example of this. They were different. Fewer people died, fewer people were injured, but they happened here in Kalaba district, the city's most upscale area, a playground for the wealthy elite and a main attraction for visitors from around the world. Reaction from the wealthy elite who have long considered Kalaba a sanctuary has been different as well. Thousands of people took to the streets to demand change. Several political leaders, including the state's chief minister, were forced out. It happened right in, in their, not their backyard, their front yard. Cyrus Guzder is one of Mumbai's most powerful executives. In an unprecedented move, he and a handful of other top businessmen recently filed a lawsuit against the government, charging them with failing to protect the people from the Mumbai attackers. You know what makes, I think, the citizens most angry was the pathetic nature of the, of the state's response. For Alwyn de Kuna and other victims of the train bombings two years ago, there was no lawsuit, no political resignations, and no billboards with messages of sympathy. It is a tale of two Indias. One is for the wealthy elite, the other for the poor who are voiceless and invisible. Todd Bear, Al Jazeera, Mumbai.